Okay, yes, so I'm Robin Ball. I'm the director of the Writing Center uh, and I teach in the English department. And I'm here to talk to you today about academic writing, what it is, how to do it, some tips, and hopefully get you interested in coming to visit us at the Writing Center. Have either of you been to the Writing Center? No. No? Have you? No? Oh, you got to go to the Writing Center. It's a cool place. So the Writing Center, we have, um, I think we have maybe 15 or 16 tutors. They are all English majors. <laughs> We have English majors who are undergraduates and English majors who are grad students. Um, so typically we pair, we try to get the graduate students paired up with our other graduate students. So you would be working with an English graduate student. You're able to make your own appointment for the Writing Center. So if you Google ISU Writing Center, you will uh, see a link at the top of our website that will take you to uh, our MyWC Online page. And you can sign up for an account there and that will show you all of the appointments that are available and all of the different tutors who are available. And you can find a time and find a person you're interested in working with and just click on that and sign up yourself. We have online appointments and in person appointments and we are open Monday through Thursday <coughs> from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then Sunday we're online only from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, so definitely come to the Writing Center. Um, it's great. I love it there. And it's really, really helpful. So moving on. So a discourse community is just a group of people who are participating in a conversation. What's your major? Computer science. You're in computer science. You're in communications. Um, so you have your own discourse communi communities. You have people who are in computer sciences who are talking to each other and sharing ideas. You have the same thing in communications, people who are talking to each other, sharing ideas, new ways of doing things, right? And so that's the community that you're part of. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about academic writing. We're talking about participating in that community and participating in that conversation with people through writing. So we communicate in classes, we communicate with our professors, with our, with our um, fellow students, right? But we also wanna communicate with that broader community. So that's what we're trying to do with academic writing. Our goals are not to simply prove that you've read something and our goals are not to summarize the research that you've done. You are probably doing a lot of research, right? And so you could probably take a lot of your research and tell people like, here's all the things I've read, here's all the things I've learned, but that's not what academic writing is. You are past that, especially as grad students, you're past that. You already have a degree in your field, so now you're ready to say more. And that's what we're doing with academic writing. 
So our goals when we are doing an academic writing are one thing is to to analyze a topic to uh, when we're analyzing, what are we doing? We're maybe comparing things and thinking about how things go together, thinking about the significance of different things that we're learning about um, and, and talking about those, uh, bringing together ideas, um, presenting an argument in your discourse communities, in your fields, there might be differing opinions about things. So in your academic writing, you have an opportunity to present to a broad audience what your opinion is and talk about why that's your opinion. So you can then um, try to be persuasive uh, to solve a problem. There might, so with differing opinions, there might also be problems that your community is facing as a community. As a discourse community, you're working to solve those problems. And your writing is going to give people ideas, and you're going to get ideas from other people's writing. So you're participating together in your field and coming up with solutions. And then finally, and all of these things kind of go with this, to add to a body of research or to add to a conversation about a topic. So within your field, there's a lot of research happening all the time. There are a lot of people talking about different things. And your job as an academic writer is just to add to that. What can you bring to that conversation? And you can really just think of it as a conversation. You have conversations all the time. You have conversations with your professors. You have conversations with your friends. And so we can think about how do we add to those conversations? What do we bring to those conversations? You bring your perspective, for one thing. That's important. That's something that only you have. You're the only person who has your specific perspective. But we also have to listen, right? That's a really important part of a conversation. So that's a big part of academic writing. We're listening to what other people in our fields are saying, and we're responding to it, and we're adding to it. So we're adding to this bigger conversation that people are having in these different fields. OK, approaches to writing. So these are meant to be, I think, just kind of some, some general advice um, for how we're going to approach writing. First of all, we're going to know that writing is subjective. Different people have different opinions about different kinds of writing, and that's okay. Not everyone's going to love your writing style. Uh, some people are going to want some things in writing, and some people are going to want other things. Different fields are going to have different expectations. So there is a lot of subjectivity in what makes good writing and what your writing should look like. But all of those fields have some certain elements that we should try to include in writing. So those are things like topic sentences and, and having a thesis statement, making sure we have an introduction and a conclusion. Those parts of an essay that are just expected, they're part of the convention and they help people understand what we're saying because it's organized in a predictable way in the way that they are expecting. Uh, writing is not just about your ideas, but also how well you express them. So there are lots of people out there who have great ideas who don't really get to share those ideas because they're not expressing them in a way that's, make, that's drawing people in. They're not expressing them in a way that's clear and helpful and making people see the significance. So having some writing skills helps you with the ideas that you're getting from your field to communicate those ideas. Um, academic writing needs to follow the rules of academic integrity. So like I said, you're participating in this conversation and you're gonna be getting ideas from other people. And it's very important that you cite those sources. It's very important that you say where these ideas are coming from. It's not only um, important because you, you, you wanna give credit where credit is due, right? It also gives you credibility because if, if someone walks into a conversation and starts talking without knowing anything about what you're talking about, you know, you're not really gonna listen to that person. But if someone comes into the conversation and they already know what everyone's talking about and they're able to say, this is what this person is saying, this is what this person is saying, here's how I'm bringing that information together. That gives you a lot of credibility as a writer. Um, and then, Finally, on this list, academic writing is not created in a vacuum. Feedback is critical. 
You might think that as the director of the writing center, I just write things on my own and I never have anyone look at them and you'd be totally wrong. I never do that. Every single thing I write, someone else looks at it. Everything, every time, anything I write, a memo, my assistant director looks at it. Um, a class, this presentation, I showed my assistant director before I came here. Feedback is very critical, not just because it can give you new ideas, but it can save you so much time, right? It's really hard for us to see what's wrong with our writing. It's hard to see what we're saying that's gonna be confusing to other people. It's hard for us to know what people are gonna need more convincing in. It's very easy for someone else to see that though. Just like uh, asking someone how your outfit looks, right? You can easily see someone else from every angle very quickly and say, ah, no, this isn't quite right. You can't see yourself. You can't, it's not easy. You gotta have lots of mirrors, right? So getting someone else to look at your writing, it's just a shortcut to getting your writing better. Okay, so some tips for improving your writing. We're gonna be looking at these um, different categories that we often see on rubrics. So these are criteria that a lot of your professors are using for grading. And I think that criteria is really helpful for understanding what those different parts of good academic writing are. They commonly fall into certain categories, which a rubric will express for you visually. And here are some of the categories you'll probably see on a rubric. I have style and mechanics up here. A lot of people are going to say grammar. I just try to avoid the word grammar, honestly, because uh, what is grammar? It's everyone has their own opinion of what something should look like. Um, everyone has their own way of writing things. Different types of English around the world have different ways of expressing things. So, you know, grammar is really just our idea of an etiquette of what writing should look like. So that's why here I'm calling it style. And then mechanics, um, kind of going along with that, focusing more on the punctuation and the, the way we're formatting things and the citations and stuff like that. So I've got punctuation up here. I've got sentence structure. Um, the choices of words that we use, those are an important part of writing. Second up here, I've got content. That's referring to the ideas, the quality, the relevance of ideas, the um, examples that you're using, the arguments that you're making, the explanations that you're putting into the paper, that's the content. We've got support up here. So that's your use of evidence, using sources to support what you're saying and saying, you know, like, look, here's my argument and this person, you know, says this and this person says this and that's my evidence for you. Um, formatting. That refers to an adherence to citation style and the general look and format of the paper. And then finally, the organization. That's the structure of the paper, the way that the ideas are organized and how the paper flows, as they say. So we're gonna take a look at each of these things. Uh, we're gonna take a look at each of these categories in a little bit more detail. So first of all, style and mechanics. I think style and mechanics should be the least important thing in writing, but they're clearly important, right? Because if we're not clearly expressing ourselves, we're gonna be misunderstood and people aren't even gonna take the time to try to understand us, right? Um, it's, it's frustrating to try to read something that doesn't make sense. Um, constant grammar and mechanical errors can make you seem less credible. And in the work world, it's going to help you out. It's going to be advantageous to sound more <coughs> professional. And that just means following the conventions of the way that we write. So that is what style and mechanics are about. Grammar um, would include things like subject verb agreement, correct use of pronouns, Selections of articles like the or a, which one is correct, selections of the correct kind of prepositions. And I bring these things up because, you know, for international students in particular, these can be difficult parts of the language because the way that we select something like a, a preposition 
pretty arbitrary, right? So it's it's really a matter of kind of learning what all the, the correct selections are for the conventions of the language. And this is a place where feedback can be really, again, like a very quick way to get help, a very quick way to improve things. Um, punctuation, we especially want to pay attention to periods and commas, um, but we also want to make sure we're using other types of punctuation correctly, colons, semicolons, and dashes. The Purdue OWL is an online resource that's a really good resource for you to use for grammar questions. Also, definitely come see us at the Writing Center. We're on the second floor of the library, if I haven't said that already. And then finally, sentence structure. You want to make sure you have a variety of sentence structures. Use a combination of compound, simple, and complex sentences. So compound sentences are going to be sentences where we have two independent clauses with some kind of conjunction between, like, I am going to stand over here and then I'm going to stand over here. I've got and between two sentences. That's a compound sentence. It's a little bit longer, right? And then you can also use some shorter sentences, some simple sentences. So we want to have different sentence structures, different sentence lengths. That keeps the writing more interesting. It makes it less monotonous. If we have the same length of sentence over and over again, it gets repetitious, gets monotonous, it gets boring, people stop paying attention. So we want to make sure we have some variety. Syntax is important. Your words should be arranged in a way that makes your sentences sound logical and expresses your points clearly and succinctly. And then diction refers to word choice. Your word choices should be professional. Up here, we've got that you should avoid using I or you in a paper unless otherwise stated. I don't know. It varies by field, honestly. In a lot of fields, that seems to be really important to people. Um, I think in the sciences, it seems to be really important to people. Um, in other fields, it's not nearly as important. Um, so if we're doing our own research, we can talk about our own research in some fields. So it varies by field. And then one thing that I think is really important is avoiding the use of vague pronouns like it or this as the complete subject of sentences. And where we see that a lot is like in response to a quote. Someone might put a quote into their paper and then say, this shows that, what is this? Is this referring to like, the entire idea of the whole quote, we need to be a little bit more specific. So this as a subject on its own, not a great thing for, for actually effectively communicating. We wanna show people what we're talking about all the time. Okay, tips to improve your style and mechanics, get feedback, go to the writing center. Um, read your paper out loud. That's a really good way to do things. I think more helpful for native speakers, of course, because it's something where you can, um, for a native speaker, you can you can usually hear when something just sounds right. Um, so for an English language learner, it's a little bit more difficult to hear if it sounds right, but it still is gonna help you hear if it sounds logical, right? Hearing something out loud, it's a different way of accessing that information. So it's going into your brain differently than if you're just looking at it. And if you start to trip over something as you're reading, then you know that's somewhere you might wanna stop and look at what you did there. Um, and then finally, read examples of good writing and try to emulate the grammar of that good writing. Definitely read things in your field. Read those um, journal articles, especially the journal <laughs> articles in your field are the big part of the conversation, usually. I don't know, some fields might be different, but um, I think for most fields, journal articles are where we see a big part of that conversation taking place. Okay, content. Content's the second thing on the list. Content is the most important part of your writing, period. It is the most important thing. And here are some important points to consider. So again, content is like what you're writing about. It's your ideas. First, we need to make sure that our writing is on topic throughout the entire essay and keep your main idea focused. It can be really easy to kind of go off on a tangent, right? We're looking at a lot of research. We're doing all this research and we're seeing all these different ideas and we wanna incorporate all of them. But if they're not related to your topic directly, 
they're not helping your argument. They're not making it more persuasive. They're making it harder to follow. So we want to make sure that our ideas are on topic and are focused throughout the whole essay. Um, the next thing on here is look for topics that are relevant and current. There should be a reason why you're writing about what you're writing. It should be important to you. It should be important to your field. It should be something you want to know about. It should be something that you want to tell people about. There needs to be a reason for writing. We're not just writing to write. We're just writing to write, then we're not really doing anything, right? So look for something that is relevant to you, something that's current, something that is important to you to write about. Um, make sure that you include more information in your papers than just what was covered in class. So for classroom assignments, um, you don't want to just give the professor back what they've said to you. You want to make sure you're adding your perspective to that. What do you have to say? And then the final thing on this list is make sure you don't overuse quotes. Um, it's very easy to do. You think, well, they said it better than I can say it, right? Mm -hmm. So why not just use what they said? Well, for one thing, if we have a bunch of quotes from a bunch of different people, then we have a cacophony. We have just a mess. We have a bunch of different voices talking in our paper. That's really hard to follow. Reading one voice and then the next voice and then the next voice and trying to piece those things together and trying to figure out why you, the writer, are sharing all of these quotes with me, the reader. That's really hard to do. If we put things into our own words, we have a tendency to explain them more and explain why they're related to what we're talking about. They also show the audience that we really understood what we read. If we have a bunch of quotes, it kind of looks like you don't know what those quotes mean, so you're not sure how to say them in your own words. So make sure you're not overusing quotes. <coughs> Okay, so some tips to improve your content. For one thing, brainstorming, always brainstorm. I don't think there's enough brainstorming that happens in the world. Um, if you have something to write about, make a list of things you could write about and then talk to people about that list and give it time. You know, if you have a writing assignment, think about it right away. Like as soon as you get the assignment, make a list of things you might write about for it and then come back to that list later your mind will be thinking of different things. And if you've already started to brainstorm, then you're gonna get more ideas as you go. Um, so make sure you give yourself plenty of time at the beginning of an assignment or at the beginning of any kind of research that you want to um, propose. Give yourself time to think about what you're gonna write about. Talk about your topic with other people. Get those different perspectives. That's, again, it's such an easy way to make things go more smoothly, to, to move your writing along, just talking to other people. Make sure you're trying to get different opinions on your topic. You're going to have your own opinion, and you need to know what the other opinions are. If you don't know what other opinions are, then you're going to be, you're going to be sharing something that's really narrow, like that's really short-sighted. Um, so you need to understand what other opinions are so that you can integrate that into your own ideas about the topic. And you also need to understand what other opinions are. So again, so you can show your audience that you understand all of the different facets of a topic. And then finally on here, apply your unique perspective to the topic. You might be thinking, there are people in this field who have decades of experience on me. What do I have to add to that? And the answer is largely your perspective. You know, yeah, you might be newer to this field, but you have had your unique life experience that's going to allow you to look at things a little bit differently from how anyone else looks at them. It's just the truth. So you need to value yourself and value what you bring with your perspective to writing. Um, what problems are you aware of that other people might not be aware of? What situations might things be applied to? Other people might not know about those situations. What can you bring to the table 
with your perspective. So those are some ideas for how to improve your content. And now let's move on to talking a little bit more about support. In academic writing, support is closely related to content. <clears throat> and support has to do with finding information from sources. People are more inclined to believe that you are credible if you can provide support, especially from academic sources. An important part of academic writing is the process of finding and presenting support for your assertions. And I think it's, for me, the most difficult thing, just organizing research. You know, you, you do research and you keep finding out more and more things and it gets kind of hard to keep track of all those things. Um, so having a good strategy for yourself, having some um, methods that work for you to keep your research organized, to keep all of your ideas together and make sure you're keeping track of where different information is coming from, that's really important for you. It's going to help you as a writer and it's going to make you seem a lot more credible. We don't want to present something and think, I'm not sure where I heard this. We've got to keep track of that research so that we can show others that we know what we're talking about. And again, just to participate in that conversation. You don't want to come and say something that someone's already said in the conversation and, and everyone's going to look at you like, yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we are providing support and showing other people who are agreeing with you, other people who are, are saying things that go along with what you're saying. Points to consider about support. Sometimes there are requirements for numbers and types of sources that you use, um, but even when there aren't requirements, it's good to think about what, how many sources you have and what types of sources you have. It's a really good idea to make sure we're using academic sources. So in your field, there should be um, academic journals that are connected to your specific field um, where people in your field submit academic writing and then other people in the field take a look at that writing and make sure that it you know, is valid. That's called peer review and then that's published and that becomes part of the conversation. So those are the main kinds of sources that we want to look for. Those are going to be current and those are going to be academic um, and we're going to be able to have faith in them because they are peer reviewed. Um, sometimes I lose track of what I'm saying. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. The second point on here, is there sufficient detail used? to elaborate upon each point. I think that it can be really easy to, again, imagine that what we're saying makes total sense, right? If you write something, it goes from your head to the paper, and when you read it from the paper back to your head where it came from, it makes total sense to you, right? But sometimes we need to add more detail in order for it to make sense to other people. We have to, that's where it's really important to get feedback from other people and say, does this make sense? Do I need to add more? And that's going to be, an, again, an easy way for us to tell that we need to add some more information. Sometimes writing can feel a little bit repetitive, I think, too, but it's always a good idea to come back to your thesis and make sure that you're, at, you're coming back to your ideas and explaining how the different points you're making are connected to the larger point that you're trying to make in your writing. Um, let's see, the evidence offered should be credible and relevant. I think we already talked about that. Um, and your paper should follow the rules of logic and critical thinking. They should hold up to questioning. You should think about what people might ask you about your paper. You should think about where people are going to have different opinions. And you should think about where people might disagree with, or I already said that, where people might um, have questions. Right. These are things we need to think about as we're writing so that we can make sure our thoughts are logical and that our writing is um, going to make sense and, and going to be something that, you know, people are always going to disagree and people are always going to have questions, but they should be the kinds of things that you have already been thinking about. Right. 
Okay, tips for improving your support. We have so many research librarians over in the library. There are librarians connected to every field, every department. Um, so you can find your librarian if you just go over there. I believe there is still a big neon question mark right in the front of the library. And that big neon question mark is where you go when you have a question, any question. So if you are in the library, you're hopefully there because you're going to the writing center and then also you're going to do some research. And the, the person sitting at the question mark is there specifically to help you find what you're looking for. And they can direct you if not if they're not the expert in your field, they will direct you to the librarian who is the expert in your field and they can help you. <laughs> so if you are struggling to find that quote you need, if you're struggling to find what journals you should be looking at in your field, if you're struggling to find um, information about the argument you're trying to make, those librarians, that's what they're there for. They're there to help you with that. Um, make sure that you're not accidentally plagiarizing by reviewing the rules of paraphrasing, summarizing, and quoting. So just quickly to review that, whether you are using a quote, whether you are putting something into your own words, and whether you are just briefly summarizing what else someone else has said, in all of those circumstances, you are expected to show where that information came from. So even if you put it into your own words, you still have to show this is the person who had these ideas. This is where I got that information from. Um, looking at your paper paragraph by paragraph and section by section, you should make that there make sure that there is support for each of the points that you're making. Um, if you don't have support for a point that you're making, um, then you need to think about how you can add support to that or consider taking things out. You can always edit your paper and remove things. If it turns out, if you don't find support for what you're talking about, you know, it's possible that your initial thoughts were not right. That's okay. We learn as we write, we learn as we research. So if you find something that seems to be unsupportable, you can remove it. And then remember that support includes statistics and data. Those are what we call like our logical appeals, but support also includes examples, descriptions, case studies, expert opinions, expert commentary. Um, so make sure that you're get, getting a variety of those things so you can appeal not just to the logical side of everyone's brain, but also give yourself some credibility by showing, you know, these are different areas that I'm pulling from to give you support for this idea. Okay, formatting. Publishing, do you either, let's see, how, how far along are you in your programs? Oh, it's the first semester. Is your first semester? How far along are you? Second. It's your second semester. Have you felt any pressure to publish in your field? I would certainly hope not. I would certainly hope not. There should not be any pressure to publish in your field. Um, really, I think there should never be pressure to publish in your field because you shouldn't be publishing unless you really have something to say, um, unless you really have something that you're compelled to share. Um, so someone tries to get you to publish, you know, I'm not telling you what to do with your life, but you don't have to publish anything. <laughs> um, but publishing in a field, is a part of many professions. And so for this reason, sometimes your professors are going to ask you to write in a format that's going to be used for publications. Um, and those formats are also things that just help us again to very quickly understand the, the logic, the way that a paper is structured. So we have um, APA style, which is very widely used um, the, from the American Psychological Association. We have MLA style from the uh, Modern Language Association, which is used in English and a couple of other artsy uh, things. And then we have Chicago style, which is used in history and art, I think. But you're probably both doing APA. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so if you're thinking to yourself, wow, it's a bunch of English majors at the Writing Center. I bet they don't know anything about APA. Well, think again. 
<laughs> we do APA stuff all the time, and we also have the APA manual. We have several copies of the APA, ma APA manual, and they're not necessarily the tutors. They're not necessarily experts in everything, but what they're really there for is to help you find what you're looking for, right? They're really good at finding things. So even if they don't know the answer, which they really might not, they're going to help you find the answer. And if it's about formatting, then the answer is probably in that APA manual. Uh, so we got to make sure that we're following the format. It's an important part of, again, just kind of showing professionalism, showing that you <coughs> understand how things work in your field. So to make sure that we're doing a good job with our formatting, we should know what kind of format is used. We already got that. You're both APA. Um, we should make sure that we're following the guidelines for all of the different parts of the paper. So for the header, um, APA does have specific requirements for headers, what type of font is required or um, recommended by your professor, what kind of spacing should be used. Um, most, most things are going to be double spaced. All of those things are things that we have to know for our format. The second thing, the more important thing, is the in-text citations. So for you in APA, we're going to be focusing on the authors and the years. Very important that we include those things. Um, it's going to, again, show your credibility and also help people follow what you're saying. If they want to go and look at what research you're looking at, um, then they're going to be able to find that easily. You also want to make sure that everything you cite within the text of your paper also makes it onto the reference page of your paper. So those things should match up completely. There shouldn't be anything cited in the paper that's not cited in the reference page. There should not be anything in the reference page that's not cited in the paper. They should match up. And then as needed, consult resources like the Purdue OWL. It, uh, it's pretty good with APA now. I think they've up updated most of it. Um, take a look at the style guide website for APA and also just get an APA manual. They're like 25 bucks. Just get one. I like using the book. I think the book make more, makes more sense than the website personally. Um, so again, this is just more about that to get the look of the format that you're using. Consult the style guides, Purdue OWL, MLA handbook, publication manual of the APA. It's very pretty. It's got a rainbow on it. I love it. Okay, more about organization. Where am I? Yes. I am. Oh, God, I'm almost done. All right. Not, sometimes I'm not so good at pacing. That's good. All right. All right. Yeah. Organization. Okay. All of the parts of the paper should be present, including a clear introduction section, a clear thesis, which is the main point, the main idea of your paper, topic sentences. So those are going to be sentences that are usually at the beginning of each section. So a section is not necessarily one paragraph. A section can be multiple paragraphs, but each paragraph should have its own topic sentence to telling the reader like, this is what this chunk of information is about. And then you need to stick to that. The paragraph should only have what it says it's going to have in that topic sentence. And that's a big part of how we keep things organized. Whatever we promise in our thesis, that's what we're going to provide in the paper. Whatever we promise in those topic sentences, that's what we're going to provide in those paragraphs. So that's how we keep things organized. It's a good idea to use transitions between your paragraphs and between your sentences. So those are words like in addition to, nonetheless, besides, I don't know, these are some, these are some transitions. You don't have to use these. There's lots of different transitions you can use, but basically we just want to show connections between what we're saying and help guide the reader through the experience of your writing. Each paragraph should include only one main idea, which is introduced in the topic sentence, and you should always make sure that your points are aligning with your thesis. Remember, you can change your thesis. If you start writing, like I said, writing is a process of discovery, and if you start writing and you start realizing like, this is not what I said in my thesis, you don't have to change what you wrote in the paper, you can change what you wrote in the thesis to match what you learned that you or your opinion was, what you realized that you wanted to say. Change your thesis to match that. Uh, read your paper out loud. I already said that. 
Um, be open to rearranging the paragraphs. So when I write, I always start with like a very rough draft. Like I don't think too much about the way that it's written when I first start writing, because I know I'm going to change it a lot. I know it's going to be very different at the end. So get your ideas down quickly in a rough draft and be open to reorganizing those so that they make the most sense for your readers. And that's where, again, getting feedback is really helpful because someone can look at that and say, like, I don't understand the, why are these things in this order? And then you can, you can change things around very easily if you're not like married <coughs> to the way that you've the, like phrased something. So after you've started to get it arranged the way you want, then we can um, reread things. Uh, so here, after you've written a draft, reread topic sentences, reread the thesis statement, make sure that things are starting to make sense. One thing that you can do here is have a friend read your paper and ask them to underline the topic sentences and the thesis statement and the main points and see if the things that they underlined are the things that you actually wanted your paper to be about. And if they match up, great. And if they don't, then you know that you need to change some things. And also just check for those transitions. Make sure that the paragraphs seem to flow together and we're not just like abruptly stopping one idea and starting another one, but we're showing connections between our ideas. And then finally, this is the last slide. In conclusion, tips for how to use instructor feedback. Your instructors put so much time and effort into putting feedback on your papers. Um, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, it takes a lot of time. Um, sometimes feedback can be difficult to look at. No one likes to be criticized, right? It does not feel good. But they're putting that effort in to help you get better, right? And that's the whole point. If they're just praising your work, that's not helpful at all. You're only getting help if you're getting criticism. So first of all, go into reading your feedback with that mindset of, I want to improve what I'm doing. This is the ticket. This is how I do it. So take a look at the comments, read through them carefully. If you don't understand what your instructor is saying, ask them for clarification. You can also take your paper to the writing center and we can go through comments with you and try to help you understand what things are about if you're not understanding what the professor is saying. I think you should probably keep your papers that you get back. You know, most of them are going to be online. So I don't uh, download them. I don't <laughs> keep the papers you get back. Keep the um, comments that you get and review them so that you can see what kind of mistakes you're consistently making. And that's going to help you figure out strategies to to address those um, recurring issues. Um, make a list of the mistakes that you're making and find resources to help you address those things. Always, always, always feel free to come to the Writing Center. We really want you there. I'm telling you, the Writing Center is just a bunch of nerds who love writing and really want to help people. So please come visit us. And uh, that's all I got for you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for.